Now the first thing to, uh, to do is to practice visualization. Now we say we are practicing, or everybody does practice, <clears throat> visualization with the left brain hemisphere. Now as you know, and we have said several times, that your brain vibrates like your heart beats, but your brain per second and your heart per minute. So we're saying that the overall average brain frequency vibration of every human being when awake and active is 20 vibrations per second. Now the idea would be to first start uh, visualizing at that level, at 20 vibrations per second, where we have learned to function on the average, uh, to practice uh, visualization. But in order to practice visualization, you need to know what that is. And that is, look at something and make an impression with your sense of sight on your brain, and then close your eyes and go over that impression mentally. Now, when you go over the impression impressed on your brain cells, brain neurons, through the sense of sight, you're visualizing. You see with your sense of sight and you visualize with your mind. So visualizing is going over the impression made with the sense of sight on your brain. When you go over in full detail and color that impression you are visualizing. So you want to practice first at seeing any one thing, then closing your eyes and going over what you saw in full detail and color. Now you're practicing visualization at the overall brain frequency, average frequency of 20 vibrations. Now that's to begin with. This is starts you off on how to visualize because visualization is the foundation for better imagination and better memory and better what we call clairvoyance, meaning a person who uses either brain hemisphere consciously. Because as we have said, only 10% of humanity by natural means develop the use of both brain hemispheres consciously. Everybody uses only the left one consciously and the right one subconsciously, which means they're not aware that they're using it, they have no control over it, and they call it the subconscious. So now, once you have practiced using a visualization uh, at the 20 vibration, average brain frequency that everybody operates on, and you now know what that is, going over the impression made with a sense of sight, mentally, in full detail and color, until you get good at it. Then you want to learn to slow down your brain waves until you get to the center of your brain frequency spectrum, the center of how your brain operates. And there's 10 cycles. The center is 10 of 20, naturally. Half of 20 is 10. So that's the center. Once you learn to function or by slowing down the brain frequency to 10 cycles, that is the connection, that is the door to the right brain hemisphere. Now, once we have done this, then we transfer those images that we have made, the impressions with the sense of sight, take them to 10 cycles and transfer them to the right brain hemisphere. Now here, we need to continue practicing, now using the right brain hemisphere to visualize with. So we are actually going from the 20 cycle vibration practice to the 10 cycle vibration practice and using the right brain hemisphere to establish a good strong foundation as to where the creative process begins. Because visualization is the starting point to imagination. What is imagination? to alter what you have visualized. Uh, let's say, for instance, you have visualized a table with four legs. Well, mentally, with the right brain hemisphere, you had two more legs on it. And mentally, see the picture of a six-legged table now. If you like that, because it looks better than with four legs, then you go ahead and create one. Maybe you've never seen a table with six legs. Now, you are the creator. You started by using your imagination to create with. This is the creative process. Begin using your imagination. So you modify images, alter them, like a four-legged table, add two more legs to it, or maybe here you create something with your mind. You see your mind is very creative at this level. You can create something that you've never seen before. So then when you like what you have created here in the world of the mind with the right brain hemisphere, you are, seeing, you are actually using a created energy to create with. Now you are a creator. You are an inventor. Because then you take that image, 
to the left brain hemisphere and bring it out to 20 vibrations, then put the boards together, you do a little carpentry, and you have a table with six legs and it looks a lot better than one with four. This could be the case. This is where inventors get their ideas. You see, Einstein did not invent the formulas. Einstein uncovered them, discovered them in this dimension. It is believed that all inventions are not uh, really inventions, they are discoveries of maybe something that's going on in other planets or other solar systems or other galaxies more advanced than ours. We trail it behind. We get those thought transference ideas into our brain and mind, but at the right brain hemisphere level, then bring them to the left one and execute what we have received, perceived, and we are creators or inventors. So we start using visualization, enhance that, then take it to the proper dimension of brain activity, transfer it to the right brain hemisphere, continue practicing visualization, then start practicing imagination. And then once you do, then you have better memory, better recall ability, better retentivity of information, that's what it means, and then better clairvoyance. A person who uses either brain hemisphere is called nowadays a clairvoyant. So you become a well-developed clairvoyant by going through all these steps. There's many ways of doing it. For instance, we mentioned that once you have learned to slow down the brain frequencies, you can add, for instance, once there, that when you want to get back into that dimension, to bring together the tips of the, of the two fingers like this, the thumb and two fingers, just like this, one hand or the other hand. Now, when you are at your level, meaning you have found the 10 cycle brain frequency vibration, you go ahead and tell yourself that this and this will keep you in, uh, aware at that dimension, meaning, say for instance, a teacher is uh, lecturing, and uh, before you go to the lecture, you go to your level and tell yourself, I want to impress the lecture strong in my mind and brain so that I can record it any time in the future with the same technique. So in, when I'm going to listen to this teacher, uh, I'm going to keep my two fingers like this while I'm listening to the person. So I'm, when I go to the lecture hall, I want to do it like this, and I'm li listening to a lecture. I want to be sure that I know the name of the lecturer and the subject matter that I'm listening to. So when I get through listening to this individual, I go back again into my level and repeat it. Whenever I want to recall that information that Mr. So-and-so, Professor So-and-so lecture on, on this subject, whatever, I can recall it any time in the future by just doing this again. Now that's the key or clue that you program yourself with. For self-programming, it's called the three-finger technique for self-programming. Now that would be when you're listening to a lecture, okay? And when you want to impress or record that information. Now you can also, when you are going to read a lesson, before you read a lesson, you go to your level. Now you know what I mean. By going to a level means the 10 cycle vibration to use the right brain hemisphere. Here we have more brain energy than at any other dimension of the brain. Here the brain is more synchronized, more stable, and more energetic to make strong impressions on neurons for better memory or recall. So then, you, before you read the lesson, you get to your level and you bring your two fingers together and you say, I'm going to count from one to three and I'm going to open my eyes and I'm going to read this lesson. Go ahead and, and name the title or subject matter, whatever, uh, lecture name, whatever you're going to listen or read, read here. Uh, if it's going to have a title, mention the title or the name of the, le of the lesson. Then you go ahead and, and read it and you tell yourself, noises will not distract me. In fact, noises will help me to, to impress information better. So you go ahead and read the lesson. When you get to reading it, at the end of reading it, you go back to your level again and repeat it again. Say, that lesson I have just read. And whenever I need to record that information in the future, all I need to do is to bring my two figures together and remember the title or subject name of the lesson and the information will come to me as though I have just